Uh, you know, I'm a woman that hit 51 years old, don't know when it happened. I think it's happened to, to a lot of us. And all of a sudden I realized like, wow, there are things that I should be doing and I should stop saying no and stop being afraid. So what got you on this journey, first of all, to help women start to live out loud and live bold? Uh, you know, I've experienced a lot of trauma in my life. And when I hit my, um, I had a very big trauma at 17 uh, a lot of relational betrayal trauma. And then at the age of 40, when I had my second large, like the catapult of them all, right. Um, I just decided, like I used everything that I, that I learned at 17 during that trauma recovery. And I started going outside. I was climbing peaks. I was taking my paddleboard onto the ocean and it was healing me. And so when I realized what it was doing, it wasn't only healing my traumas, but it was actually allowing me to find this part of me that I, and access this part of me that I never even knew existed, quite frankly. I knew she was in there, but it actually brought her forth. And I just started doing everything that I had always thought, okay, could I ever do that? And then I'm like, well, why not? Like, why not write the book? Why not start a business? Why not? Why not, you know, climb peaks? Why not take off for eight days into the mountains? Why not? And so here I am. What do you think got you to that place? I kind of call it unlocking that bold. You know, what, what do you think got you there that finally said, I'm going to do, I'm going to do everything that I've wanted to do today? You know, um, a few things. First of all, it was, I was standing on a peak in Sequoia National Park. And when I was on this trail with some friends, uh, some of them male, uh, one female, um, every time I put my pack down, they put a rock in my pack, like literally like a big boulder. Right. And I picked it back up and I was carrying this pack along the trail. And then I would go in, pull something out and I found this rock. And I'm like, you guys have got to stop putting rocks in my pack. Like stop handing me your, right. can I cuss? Is that okay? Your, sure. your stuff, your <laughs> shit to carry. Like I don't want to carry it. Right. And I realized after about the third or the fourth time that this happened, that people have been doing this to me my entire freaking life. Mm. through relationships, through um, things happening to me, through, uh, you know, society. And I thought, you know what? Enough, enough. And so when I, I ended up going to this peak, this little landing, and I looked out into this amazing, gorgeous valley below and seeing how incredible this world is. And I thought, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. And that was after my trauma at 40. I was, I was um, probably, four, I was 41 at the time that this happened. And I just stood there and I thought, I'm getting divorced. I'm going to be just fine. I'm not going to worry about my financials. And I'm going to pick myself back up again because that's what I did at 17. And so that was like the catapult of it all. That was the big trigger of it all where I just thought, you know what? I can do anything. Like anybody can, right? Like that's that was the the message, the the message that I got from nature, quite frankly, from from the universe of like I don't have to hold on to people's stuff and I can move forward just as I am. Yeah, I was 42 years old and I got divorced, but the separation started at 40. And it's that's another pivotal area, right? 40 years old is a scary time because you feel like you should starting having some things organized and wrapped up a little right. bit. And then when you start to unravel those things at that age, you think, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm starting all over again. But when you get beyond, I think we all have fear. I don't think that that's missing. But when you get beyond that and you actually can be bold and live a little bit out loud and know you can handle anything, that's where you start finding some of your answers. And you found those in nature, I guess, right? What is it about being outside? I did. And, you know, and I, so there's two things that I want to address here. First of all, people mistake fear. They mistake excitement for fear. And actually, we're only born with two fears. Did you know that? The fear mm -hmm. of loud noises and the fear of falling. And so when we can start to realize and actually access and we can sit there and go, OK, is this really fear that I'm feeling right now or is this excitement? Women tend to uh, I'm just going to say like and men, too, we tend to um, not listen to that intuitive hit within us. Right. And that's that voice of, uh, you know, you're fine, you're safe. And it's and it's because of our traumas that we actually tend to not feel safe. Right. And so sure. we forget to listen to our internal self. What nature did for me, though, is it allowed me to get out of my story. And so my story was the ruminating story of I need to be safe and find safety in other people, mm -hmm. which then made me take away the power, that internal power within myself and that voice within myself and listening to my own red flags and sitting there saying, OK, if anybody knows, it's you. 
meaning me, right? We all know. And so why we continuously access the answers from somebody else when we actually internally know ourselves is beyond me. It's, it's something that we're taught in, in society. And so we take our own power away and we literally give it to the answers that we want to hear from others when really the answer is in, within ourselves. Going out into nature literally like slows the frontal lobe of your brain and that's where we find clarity. That's where we find all the answers within ourselves. Isn't it interesting that we come full circle? That's where we started. And then we ran from it as, as much as we could and, you know, got as technical as we could and got as business-like and career-minded as we could. And now we find that we're going back there for those answers. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? It's very fascinating to me. It's very fascinating. Well, let me ask you a question because, it, you know, in this podcast, we speak to women that are in this place, right? They're midlife, they're in their prime, whatever midlife is for you. I don't know anymore. I say 50, but if, you know, I don't know how, how long people are going to live anymore. So right. um, we're talking to women, though, that are in the middle of a lot of incredible transitions, whether that transition is kids leaving home, whether it's like you and I had a divorce, whether or not it's going through menopause and knowing that you're not going to have, you know, children anymore, um, whether or not it's a career change, because a lot of people find that this is a time that they want to do something that they've always wanted to do, not what they should have done, but what they have actually really always wanted to do. What do you, where do you start with these women? When I'm, well, first of all, I get them back to center right? Like mm -hmm. that's, that's where we really need to start is from that center space within us. So going back to finding out what is the foundation of you? What are your values? What's important to you? What do you like? We so many times don't even know what we like. What are your gifts? You know, when, when people come into the retreats with me, that's one of the first things I ask is what are your gifts? What do you bring? And it floors me how many people don't know. They don't see themselves as, as a gift simply because they can sit with another woman and listen to what is happening within them, right? And so I always say we're mirrors for one another. I'm no different than you. You're no different than me. We have little bits of story within each one of us. And so really, truly getting back to who are you is one of the most important things that we can do. I don't think we ask ourselves those questions because our mind is never quiet enough, right? We get up in the morning, we grab the phone, we say, we're not going to grab the phone, but then we answer just these five emails and we have to get the gym yeah. in, and then we have to, you know, so we we're on such a to-do list, uh, in our lives every single day. I think it's hard to quiet that noise. And that's essentially what you're talking about is quieting mm -hmm. the noise. So you can find out what people like, what are some of those gifts that you think that people have that they might not even be aware of? So if they're listening and they ask themselves those questions, because I think as you're talking, I'm asking myself those questions. What are some of those gifts that you found that people have and they might surprise themselves with? Well, can I share one of your incredible gifts that I'm sure. seeing right now? You have an insane smile and beautiful smile. And oh, so that you. alone is a gift, right? The gift of smile, the gift of presence, the gift of listening, the gift of sharing, the gift you're doing. This is an incredible gift to all the women that are listening right now. Like sharing story is an incredible gift. And so it, we, we overcomplicate everything, including what our gifts are. Our presence oh, so is true. being here. It's so true, right? We think, oh, yeah, well, my so true. Love, uh, I can't sing. I can't, you know, I can't right. do this. Actually, we all can't. You may not like the sound of your own voice singing. Trust me, others will. Somebody will. And so we, we just overcomplicate all of it. And so keep it simple. Keep it very, very, very simple. Just look in the mirror every morning and say, okay, my showing up today is a gift. My breath is a gift. You know, it's funny. I found yesterday uh, myself saying thank you. My my father's eighty two years old. He just went. He he got corona. He got COVID uh, after being boosted and all this stuff. And and I thought yesterday morning, I'm like, my gift is every time he picks up that phone. And I didn't realize it. And I thought, oh wow, those are those are the kind of things that you want to be aware of. And it's a shame that we have to do it when we you know when we hit that place of fear where it's like the worst case scenario. That's when we appreciate. And I think what you're teaching people is to start appreciating right now, so it doesn't have to be at that, you know, that worst case scenario that we get to when we finally say thank you. Yeah. Do you know, one of the questions that I actually ask myself is, um, I have this thought of this process of, I'm, I'm going to live to 108 and I don't know where it came from. This number just popped into I like my that. Mind. I like that Isn't number. Great? I know. So, so 52 is your midlife or 50, I'm 54. Married. I'm not a math I'm person. Not married 54. I'm, not, I'm 48 right now. So yeah, I, I'm getting there. Um, which 
that's a gift. Like I yeah. look at aging as one heck of a huge, beautiful gift. Uh, but one of the things that I ask myself when I'm in that moment of pause of where I'm afraid or, or can I do this or what am I doing? Right. Is simply asking my 108 year old self, how would you handle this right now? And oh, what would you think great. about this moment? Right. What would you think about how I'm walking through this right now? Would you be proud of me for doing X, Y, Z? So, and would no you be a little that. more bold, a little more daring? Would you take a different chance? Would you go a different way? Mm -hmm. I love that. I have to figure mm -hmm. out what my age is going to be because I'm already 51. So I guess 102 would, would be my midlife. I don't know. <laughs> Why is that there? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll take 110. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I really like that idea, though, because the truth is, is we do the, we do it now. We're saying, like, what would you tell your 25-year-old self? Well, you're I saying, what would I tell my, you know... My, my 48 year old self, right? Right, right. I mean, when I, I always, and, and understand where I came from was a very, very, and I, and this is where I think that I, um, if you don't mind me throwing this in, people look at me and they think, oh, well, that's just her. Okay. Where I came from was a very devastating space. I mean, I had like tremendous complex PTSD to the point that I thought about taking my life eight years ago when everything happened. And so wow. Getting outside was really my place of reclaiming my power and reclaiming who I am as a woman. I've got three sons, you know, I'm a mom, a single mom. I, you know, I'm now divorced. And so there was a lot that, that went into this and it's, it's possible for everybody. Trust me. Like it's truly possible for everybody to get to the state of reclaiming who you are and actually loving the person that you are today. Well, I think, you know, you, you say something, a lot of people throw around the word divorce, right? Half, you know, one in every, every two couples has gone through a divorce according to statistics, but what comes out of that? You know, it was a very, I had the same thing at a very trying time. I was in a, in a, uh, a relationship that was not a healthy relationship across the board for me. Financially, I was putting over a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt from money that I didn't know was, was being spent out from under me. And I look back at it and I go, Oh my gosh, if I survived that and I survived, you know, my mother died at a young age, my stepmother died just recently. You know, like I can do it. There's nothing to be afraid of, but the only thing to be afraid of is not appreciating every single day. When you, exactly, and every single moment, it's not even the mm -hmm. days, it's literally the moments. You're right. And I think, You're right. That, I think that that's where we also, where we also mistake it, right? We always say, well, it's about the, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. I say it's not even about the journey, it's about the moments within the journey that get us to the destination. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. at the end of the day, yeah, you can look back and say that was a great day. How about if you actually take the pause in the moments every now and then and say, okay, I'm having a, like, this is a, this is a great conversation. Thank you. Right. And so to really, truly taking the moments and appreciating them, that's where it starts. It's funny. I started, somebody suggested I do this and I thought it was an annoying waste of time um, to write down my, you know, cause I'm like, Oh, what else can I add into the day? So I have meditation, I, I have journaling, I have, you know, what, what else? Um, <laughs> But she said, write down your accomplishments because I, don't, I think you forget them and then you move into the next day and you forget them and you move into the next day and you kind of reset every time. So start writing them down and at the end of each day. So at the end of each day, I scroll, you know, I scroll down a little, a couple of things. And um, on a Friday night, I was sitting there and I, I went, I'm going to look and see what I wrote this week. And I, there were like 20, I thought pretty amazing things that I had done that by Friday night, I was so exhausted. I couldn't remember them, but I, I guess I, I say that in saying like, you're right. It's about those moments. So let me ask you a question. If people come on one of these journeys with you or they come on a retreat, how does that work? Can you just go through what they would do and learn? Cause I'd love to just hear about it. Oh my gosh. They're so incredible. I can say that because I started doing these because the Grand Canyon was a part of my space where I did a lot of healing. Um, mm -hmm. And so, and metaphorically, it just works, right? Like we, we hike down into the Canyon, like we yeah. go into ourself, we stay down there, we meditate, we laugh. Laughter is one of the most key ingredients, right? It's like sugar for a good cake. Mm -hmm. Like you have to have it. And so it's, it's just a beautiful space um, to really dive into who we are. And then we hike out of the Grand Canyon and we are transformed human beings. The way that I work them, though, is through a three-month program. So we do coaching prior to to get you prepped and ready. It's this is not like REI, this right. is like or or any other like outfitter, okay? 
So sure. we, we really, truly get you prepped in terms of, of who you are, the internal space of spirit, mind, uh, soul, and body. Um, and then we show up and we go into a journey that's literally four or five uh, days, dependent on the retreat. And we hike down in and we stay in this beautiful cabin together, 10-person cabin next to a creek. Um, we adventure, we meditate, we laugh, we journal, we walk up streams and go up to waterfalls. And I take people to all of the most spiritual, most enlightening places full of so much awe and wonder that I went to during my recovery. Um, but in just the, it's not only like the people that I take down, it's, it's actually women and men that, that mm -hmm. on some mm -hmm. of the retreats that I take, uh, cause I think that's really important that we also see one another as humans that's sure. in, 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 in our story. And the other thing that's really important to know is that it's not only the, for those people that are going through trauma recovery, it's for literally everybody because we've all experienced something. So wherever anybody is in their life, in their life, that's who we you know, we, we, we welcome into, um, and you're ready to, to step into this new bold space of your life. That's who we welcome in. And they're a lot of fun. I run land healing retreats in the Grand Canyon, and then I do water healing retreats in Alaska. So we do kayaking out of Alaska, out of Whittier. Oh, wow. And we, we kayak next to glaciers and, and water healing is very different than land healing. And there, it's just, I, I look at it as my honor to be running these and to be witnessing what I do with these incredible humans. I'm sure it's amazing to hear how their lives has changed one month, two months, two years after they go on one of these retreats. Babies, I mean, divorces, relationships, like literally like I, I could tell new careers, stepping oh, out of careers. It's the coolest good. thing. 